All right, so uh, this is going to be 10.6, and what we're dealing with is now we're going into the circle and talking about the lengths of segments and the lengths of uh, secants and chords and things like that. So again, more theorems, more formulas. Very, very, very important for you to write down these formulas and just understand. You don't have to memorize the formulas because you know you'll usually be able to use these foldables, but it's just important for you to be able to see how these uh, formulas are applied. So let's get through some definitions on this and then we'll kind of get into it. So segment of chords. It says if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, that's this picture right here, two chords intersecting, then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the lengths of the segments of the other chord. What does that mean? Let me draw you a picture here. So we're going to label this A, B, C, D, and E. All this is saying is that if you were to take each of these chords and break them into two segments, for example, uh, if we take EA and EC, okay? So we're going to do EA and EC, so from the center. If we take the product of that, whatever the length of EA is times whatever the length of EC is, that will always be equal to the multiplication or the product of the other two, ED times E B. Okay, so this segment right here times this segment uh, equals this segment times this segment. It's really, really simple formula. You just got to be able to apply it. Okay, the second thing deals with a secant segment. So let's first uh, define what a secant segment is. A secant segment is a segment that contains a chord of a circle. So that's this portion right here. Okay, so that's the chord right there. Okay, and then it says, and has exactly one endpoint outside of the circle, right there. Okay, so that's where that comes into play right there, is that's the one endpoint on the outside. The part of the secant segment that is outside the circle, in other words, this part right here, is called the external segment. Okay, so we have to make sure we clarify that before we get into this. Now, again, let's talk about the theorem. So it says secant, uh, segments of secants. If two secant segments share the same endpoint, so we have secant here, a secant here, they share the same endpoint, then the product of the lengths of one secant and its external segment will equal the product of the other secant and its ex external secant. So again, let's draw this out and explain this. So we have A, B, C, and then we have D, and then E. So what this is saying is that if I take the product of A, C, the entire secant, and the external portion of it, A, B, that will be equal to the entire other secant multiplied by its external. And again, this is if you have two secants that uh, come to one point, this will always be true. Okay. The last thing is a uh, segments of secants and tangents. In other words, if one is a tangent and the other one's a secant, there's a formula that works here. It says if they share an endpoint outside the circle, then the product of the lengths of the secant segment and its external will be equal to the tangent line squared. Again, let's label this so you can see it. Scroll down a little bit here. So A, B, label it as such, and then C, and then D. Okay, so what this said was, if we take AC, the entire secant segment, times the external, AD, that will be equal to AB squared. So whatever the length of AB is squared, okay? So those are the three uh, things that we're dealing with in this section. So let's do a few problems on this, and uh, you know, and then we'll get into a couple that you can do on your own. So we have a couple of problems to do together and a couple for you to do on your own. Okay, so what I wanna do is let's start with this example because this is a little bit more difficult, and then I'll have you do this one on your own. But again, here's the idea of this. Once I see these chords, uh, intersecting like this, I know that I'm going to use my formula that looks like this. PO times PM 
will be equal to Pn times Pl. And then if you always write out your formula, then all you have to do is plug in what you know. So I know that PO is X times, I know that PM is 8, equals PN is 6 times PL is X plus 8. So again, now I solve. 8X equals 6X plus 48. Again, all I did was uh, distribute this through. Now I subtract 6x from both sides, and I'm left with 2x equals 48. Divide by 2 on both sides, we get x equals 24. And again, I could go on to ask, what does that mean the segments are equal to? We just didn't ask that there. I could say, what is the value of LP? And then you would plug the 24 back in for X and get 24 plus 8 is 32. But that wasn't asked. You just got to be very careful about what they're asking. Okay, why don't you do this one on your own? Um, hit pause on the video so you have a chance to do it, and then just hit play when you're ready. Okay, so you should have gotten X equals 8. Hopefully you got that. If not, uh, pay attention here. We have CG times CE. So CG times CE will equal CF times CD. And then all I did was plug in what I know. CG is X, CE is 18, CF is 9, and CD is uh, 16. And then I solved the equation. 18 times X is 18X. 9 times 16 is 144. Divide both sides by 18, and you get X equals 8. Okay? So uh, again, Let's do this uh, one down here. This one's a little bit more difficult than this one over here. So uh, actually, I take that back. Let's, let's do this one. I think this one's a little bit more difficult. So we'll do the tangent one, and then I'll let you do the secant one on your own. So for this one, we're, this is a tangent and a secant. So therefore, our formula will look like this. It will be AC times BC equals DC squared. So what I'm going to do is plug in what I know. So AC is 16 plus X. Okay, so AC is X plus 16. You got to remember that we have to add both of those to get it. So we have 16 plus X times BC, which is 16, equals DC squared, which is 24, so it'll be 24 squared. So now again, we're going to multiply through, distribute. This is 16X plus 256 equals 24 squared, which is 576. Now we just solve our equation, minus 256 from both sides, and we get 16X equals 320, divide both sides by 16, and you get x equals 20. Again, once you have the formula, it's really easy. You're just plugging values in for your unknowns based on what's given to you, and then just solving. Okay, why don't you try this one on your own? Keep in mind these are two secants. So you're not using this formula, you're using the, the uh, segments of secants formula. So Again, look at the formula on the previous page if you need to, and then just go ahead and hit play when you're ready, um, but take your time to do this and see if you can get it right. Okay, so for this one, you should have gotten x equals 5. Again, let's go through this. We have CE times CD equals CF times CG. So again, plug in what we know. 3 plus x is CE. 3 is CD. That's these two parts. 4 plus 2 is CF. 4 is CG. Plug in what we know and now solve. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times X is 3X. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Minus 9 on both sides. 3X equals 15. Divide by 3 on both sides. Get X equals 5. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this is a shorter video, so that's good. Make sure you get on Edmodo and take your quiz. Um, and if you have any questions, please bring those to class. Uh, so take care. See ya.